This is to S1012E, and it's a note. I don't know how to number it, but when I retired, I, I decided I'd just take a few postgraduate studies, and I did um, one on, you know, diplomas and so on, one on which are basically the essence of foundational degrees condensed into a postgraduate year, you know. I did one in um, religious studies and another one in philosophy. And my interest behind both of them was, well, very much on the Christian track at the time, but um, actually in, in terms of worldliness it was political theory. And um, one thing in particular, we were studying, you know, I'm not, I think it was the philosophy, but it was the nature of personhood. And in a secular way, of course, it's being lectured and so on, because it's a secular institution, although not in its history, the university. Universities developed from the monastery, but in its current day establishment, and I presented it, therefore, that personhood or individuality was, in fact, a focus of relationships. We are each a particular focus of a, a particular view of other relationships. And um, we crystallize that out as a person. But we're in fact becoming, it's a, a bit, I suppose, without realizing it was coming that way. Uh, the insistence in, in Buddhism that we are simply the result of causes and conditions. And Buddhism, as a religion, doesn't own God. Although I personally am very clear that the Buddha was just getting rid of the trappings of religion too come to the heart of God in a way, but this is beyond his followers and um, their religion was accordingly. A religion with no God. I mean, that sounds like an astonishing contradiction, really. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's as secular as it comes, which may be why in some sense it's almost acceptable to the modern world. Um, but not quite, of course, because its foundation is in, well, as I understand it, a man who was utterly devoted to a very essence of God as he experienced it. Not how he could describe it. He could only describe it by annihilating false religion as he saw it. He couldn't specify the wonderfulness of his experience. I wonder if I got it right there. I mean that in the positive state sense. But yes, in, in terms of this particular little series of recordings, um, there is only God in, 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 in a very real spiritual sense. But he's thinking out in terms of company and fellowship. And a sort of separate himself in relationship to the family and each member of the family's relationship to each other. So we are stars in an astonishing space of God. And he sees himself from a trillion, trillion, trillion different points of view which he did not have in his completeness, 
<laughs> that sounds like a real paradox contradiction, doesn't it? But you know, he had the all of things, but now he can also experience all the partiality of things as well. So our family enriches each of us, not just each of us, but in very purpose, our Heavenly Father too. How lovely. Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. I find then that I'm in a theosity view of what I take to be a loveliness of God as a person of persons of persons. alone and in great need. And we are the loveliness of meeting that need by his grace and goodness and creativity and beautifulness. I just love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Yes, my egocentric uh, take on it suddenly hit me that I've f found in this my true spiritual doctorate. Um, as a single contribution, a brick in the vast eternal creation, a movement towards the understanding of God. This doesn't sound very humble, does it? But um, that's because we're children of God. We're not humble in terms of where we are going and becoming. For we are, is it the child mirrors mum's face has a reflection of it within the mind of the in the baby and when that picture is matched by mum's presence all beautifulness of being comes over the child because of course all the child's needs are being met baby Blessed assurance, light, fullness of eternal life, as only God, our heavenly Dad, truly conceives of it. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. So we are his joy. And this is an incredible joy to us to know. His joy in us is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, was the scripture. Was misunderstood, was thought to be oh, um, our joy in, in knowing him. Well, yes, in a way. But the real way was his joy in creating us means we are ever created. And dare I say it cannot fail because he is God, our wonderful dad. Love you, dad. Thank you, dad. Uh, we dwell 
in him, in whom we dwell and have our being. That's what the space is, speaking to us by its appearance to us from our narrow point of view. That the stars, galaxies and so on, presumably infinite in number, perhaps, <laughs> it's uncertain isn't it, <laughs> um, abide in this space, the space is anything but nothing, it's his very self in whom we live and move and have our being. So I've overcome the dichotomy between what religion played out as the world, I pray not for the world, but that those whom thou hast given me out of the world, for they are thine. I'm tempted to say no, The world was all of his and still is, and he's given his all in this fantastic creation, and I don't just mean perhaps our universe, I don't know, just know I love him, I just know there's something in me that with all my heart wants to love him, it wasn't there before and it is now. That is the miracle of creation and the loveliness of heaven in all lack of humility may I say this is what graduation truly is about and no doctorate can come near it just can't except it be written by God.